every night when I'm outside, I'm always looking up, never down at the ground. I'm always gazing up at the stars and the moon, and it really makes me wonder. I'm wondering if there will be a day when I won't be able to see the stars anymore. Wondering if we humans can take ourselves further into space one day, and wondering if it's necessary that we do. The habits that we have been taught, adopted, and become accustomed to over time is killing our planet every day. With every car we drive, 4.6 metric tons of carbon dioxide are emitted into the atmosphere every year. With every year we continue to eat hamburgers, 39 million cows are killed in slaughterhouses that emit carbon dioxide and methane. The habits that we have been taught are okay, and the decisions that we consciously make every day are single-handedly destroying our only current habitat. This means that the exploration of space has become even more crucial than ever for the survival of the human race. So, what exactly is space exploration? Space exploration is the use of technology to explore space beyond and around our home planet. It is how we learn about the history of our our planet, our surroundings, and even ourselves. As someone who wants to have a future career in aerospace engineering, I have taken an interest in researching and learning about space and how to explore it. I also plan to be focusing on this issue in my future career because I want to help find a solution to this very pressing pr problem. Our goal of getting to space and our knowledge of space is critical for the future existence of humans. Earth will not be able to support human life in the near future if we remain on this track of being ignorant about how our actions and lifestyles affect the environment daily. There are too many greenhouse gases in Earth's atmosphere. Greenhouse gases such as water vapor, carbon dioxide, and methane all lead to a warmer planet. A warmer planet can lead to devastating effects like melting ice caps, rising sea levels, and warmer climates, all of which affect the habitats and general well-being of animals, including humans. If the amount of greenhouse gases become too great, it can strip li living organisms of oxygen. Now let me paint you a picture. You're on Earth, except you can't even recognize it as Earth. It's a deserted wasteland. Pollution is blocking out the sun. What once used to be a roaring river and a shining ocean is now dried out. Earth is dead. A planet once thriving with life is dead. The extinction of humans is inevitable with the track we are on. However, there can be an escape, an alternate solution. Having an understanding of space beyond and around our home planet can prepare us for a future that humans can once again prosper in. Some of the envir environmental challenges that we are experiencing today have happened in the past. Scientists have stated that about 250 million years ago, during the Great Dying, more than 90% of species in the oceans died out, as did two-thirds of those on land. This extinction was mostly caused by the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere that were released from a volcanic eruption. However, in contrast to this mass extinction, where a natural disaster was the cause, humans are the cause of today's environmental concerns. If we can predict when the Earth will no longer be able to support human life, we can prepare ourselves and keep the human race in existence some other way, and maybe even some other place. One of the most promising alternative destinations for humans to live on is Mars, our neighboring planet. Mars, also known as the Red Planet, is the fourth planet in our solar system. It is nicknamed the Red Planet because of a layer of red dust that covers the surface of the planet. There are expeditions to find out more about Mars and if it would be capable of supporting life, maybe even human life. For example, NASA has a program that includes sending rovers to Mars. With this program, scientists have been able to identify significant similarities between Earth and Mars, like clouds in the atmosphere and the seasons the Mars goes through. These rovers that have been sent to Mars have been testing the surface of the planet to determine one of the main questions. Has there been life on Mars? With the discoveries from these rovers, liquid water could have been or even could be on Mars. With the presence of liquid water, life can be sustained. NASA's current mission is to seek signs of life. Scientists are seeing if microbial life is currently on the planet or have been in the past. By doing this, we can learn about not only the history of the Red Planet, but about what the future could hold for it. For a long time, walking on Mars was something that humans wanted to do, just to prove that we could. However, it is now a necessity. 
Business Insider producer Jessica Orberg presents five reasons as to why exploring Mars is now a necessity, including demonstrating political and economic leadership, growing as a species, improving the quality of life on Earth, discovering life on Mars, and ensuring the survival of the human race. If the United States were to go to Mars, many more. If the United States were to go to Mars, it would make a huge statement to all other countries. Like the moon landing mission, doing something that has never been done before in a space that no one owns demonstrates superiority. Humans can grow as a species by exploring Mars because it can inspire the younger generations to continue exploring space. The more people exploring space, the more information we have about it, and which can enable humans to make a move to Mars. It is possible to improve the quality of life here on Earth by exploring Mars because some of the most innovative inventions and solutions to problems have been made while exploring space, such as the camera in our cell phones, LED lights, and so many more things. Discovering life on Mars can make moving humans there even more desirable. If humans were sent to explore Mars, many more discoveries could be made than by just sending rovers. Ensuring the survival of the human race is the most obvious and crucial point made. If we do not want humans to go extinct, we need to take this point seriously and deeply consider colonizing Mars. More money could be put towards researching the space around our Earth and other planets, specifically Mars. Money is needed to organize and pay for everything needed to make this research happen. Mars does have the ability to sustain human life. However, humans need to turn it into a livable environment with artificial Mars habitats. Money is needed to not only make these habitats a real thing, but the engineering of them, the assembly, the transportation to Mars, and so many more things. The amount of money that is currently being put towards the research would not be enough to actually take action and make a move to Mars. Although humans have really pushed Earth to its limits, there is still time to turn our habits around. There is still a way to extend the amount of time we have left here on the planet, the only planet we have ever called home. Scientists say that with the lifestyle choices humans make, we only have 11 to 12 years to prevent irreversible damage to Earth. This means that we need to switch to a sustainable way of life now. If we are able to make this change, moving some humans to Mars would be more of a precautionary act. In other words, if humans can switch to a sustainable way of life, there is still hope. It is scary to have to think of a way out of the only planet humans have ever lived on, but at this point in time, it is necessary to do. There are ways that we can postpone the immediacy of moving to Mars, like changing our habits. However, humans have created an environment that just changing our ways is not going to be enough. We need to think of a more permanent solution, like colonizing another planet, but there are small things anyone and everyone can do to help our home planet. Stop using materials that are harmful to the environment and stop using excessive amounts of limited resources. For example, do not use plastic or styrofoam as they are both human-made materials that do not decompose in Earth's soil. You should limit your water use. Fresh, drinkable water is a limited resource on Earth, and using it all in a short amount of time will not benefit anyone. Using public transportation or carpooling is a good way to reduce the fossil fuels that harm the Earth in multiple ways, like polluting both the air we, dr the air we breathe and the water we drink. <laughs> Riding your bike or walking anywhere is also a good way to, to minimize the amount of pollution you are putting into the atmosphere. You could also alter your diet. For example, you can limit the amount of meat you consume and develop a more plant-based diet. You could also plant more trees. Due to photosynthesis, the process that enables trees and other plants to survive, trees need carbon dioxide. The more trees we have, the more they can help combat the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. With the intake of carbon dioxide and the release of oxygen, trees need carbon dioxide to survive. These tasks are all very small and simple and can only work if everyone contributes and does their part to help. We do still have a chance to turn our living habits around, and we need to if we want to avoid extinction. Having another planet that can support human life will significantly lengthen the amount of time humans have to survive. It will also give us humans a chance to start over and take care of the environment that we rely on for life. All humans can unite and work together to save ourselves and future generations. Together, we can explore space to ensure the survival of the human race. Thank you.